assalamu alaikum listeners i hope all of you are fine i'm here to discuss um chapter number 15 of corporate financial reporting which is accounting for income tax um in this chapter we will be talking about that uh, why do deferred tax assets and liabilities arise what what are the reasons for them and uh, we will also be to- talking about permanent and the temporary differences starting with the introduction that when do we calculate the rules uh, means when do we calculate the taxes by following the gap or ifrs rules the rules are different than uh, what we follow while cal- while calculating the profit under the tax law because uh, taxes are calculated based on usually uh, cash basis uh, information rather than accruals uh, or you can say rather than def- deferrals most of the time so the divergence is caused the difference between the income which you are calculating by using ifrs or gap and the tax income is uh, because of uh, different reasons uh, one of the most important reason is uh, the rules which are being followed like accounting standards are different than the rules and regulations of uh, government bodies or the tax authorities so us Uh, gap and ifrs they usually rely on accounting principles uh, mainly matching principles and accrual accounting while the tax authorities they demand the cash actually uh, which is being spent or received uh, so that the proper um, calculation of taxes could be done on the cash income earned so uh, because of accruals because of uh, matching principle there is timing difference between the the book and the tax income for example if uh, you talk about um earn earned revenue um earn earned revenue is that revenue which you collect from your customers in advance according to the ifrs and gap it's a liability and it becomes slowly slowly with the passage of time when you earn it it becomes a revenue okay but uh, in most of the tax uh, uh, territories or in most of the countries they say whatever money you have collected in form of earned and revenue consider it as revenue immediately because you collected it now you can see this is tax which says record it immediately this is ifrs which says follow the matching principle or revenue recognition principle because it's a revenue so according to the revenue recognition principle this is deferred revenue means in future you have to uh, recognize it when you will earn it so uh, this difference is temporary the reason is in uh, for example this is 2019 when you have received this earn and revenue for the tax calculation sake this will be the revenue in 2019 but for ifrs calculation sake in, it will be liability in 2019 but in 2020 when whole services will be given it will become a revenue but ultimately it will be recognized a revenue so it's a temporary difference between the tax uh, revenue and the ifrs revenue which will be later on resolved so this type of differences they create deferred tax liability or deferred tax asset i'll be explaining you the example of deferred tax liability first then i'll take you towards deferred tax assets calculation okay so uh this is an example um deferred tax liability is basically um is it's an increase in the tax because it's a liability in the taxes payable in the future years uh which is because of temporary tax differences as i said before and it will eventually reverse its effects will be gone i have an example over here um the company has purchased the equipment for $60,000 and the life of the equipment was 5 years the tax rate is 40% assume book law book law means i f r s i'm not talking about both of them either i f r s or gap okay assume the book law book law means accounting books law follows the straight line depreciation while the tax law follows the accelerated depreciation 
means accelerate depreciation is a depreciation method in which in initial years you charge more depreciation and in later years of the life of asset you charge less depreciation so um, if you see over here um, book and uh, now we need to calculate the depreciation because um, on this asset depreciation is an expense which will be affecting uh, uh, the income statement why because the taxes are calculated in income statement on the profits right so let's talk about it uh, in the first year let's talk about the book depreciation which follows the straight line method now the life is five years there is no residual value given so 60,000 divided by five every year depreciation is 12,000 okay so every year for the five years we have this depreciation in the tax uh, based calculation the depreciation expense is given by using the accelerate depreciation method which is 20,000, 16,000, 12,000, 8,000 and 4,000 it's given in this question and you can see that initially it's more and in the last year it's, it's the least so this is what accelerate depreciation method says you can also uh, be asked to calculate uh, the double declining balance method to calculate the tax depreciation or any other method. Now, if you see here, ultimately in the tax books or in the accounting books, total depreciation expense is going to be 60,000, but the timings are different right so um, now if you see in the first year the tax books have charged more depreciation expense than the accounting books how much more depreciation they have charged the more depreciation is 8000 it means that in the tax books because the expense is more the in taxable income is going to be less but in the accounting books, because um, the uh, ta uh, depreciation expense is less, uh, that's why tax is going to be more. So if you see here, for example, your pre-tax uh, book income means taxable income in accounting books is 100,000 after deducting all the expenses. Um, this is 100,000. Uh, in the tax books, it's going to be 8,000 less. Why? Because it is having more uh, depreciation expense. So that's why in the tax books, the taxable income is 92,000 because it has more depreciation expense. For example, it states the same in all the years. No other factors are changing. So in the books every year, the pre-tax income, I know it's not true, but just to keep the example simple, we are assuming that every year the tax pre-tax income income is 100,000 but the income tax books income is going to change because it has either more or less depreciation expense than the accounting books so in second year the tax books has 4,000 more depreciation can you see it has more depreciation 4,000 uh, so it's pre-tax income is going to be 96,000 how did we calculate this 100,000 minus this 4,000 Moving on towards in, in the third year, can you see there is no difference in the uh, depreciation expense. So it means that it's not going to affect the pre-tax books. Both of the uh, books will have uh, the same um, pre-tax income. In uh, fourth year, uh, the tax books has less depreciation than the accounting books. So it means that pre-tax income in tax books is going to be more 4,000 than the accounting books. So accounting books, if it has a pre-tax income of 100,000, so taxable income in tax books is going to be 104,000. So these are tax books and this is accounting books. Okay. Final year, again, 8,000 more uh, uh, depreciation expense in accounting books so textbooks has 8000 less depreciation expense so their profit pre-tax profit is going to be 8000 more okay so if you see ultimately the effect this changes this temporary difference is reversed initially it was increasing but later on it was decreasing and at the end of the time there is zero temporary difference that's why we call it temporary because eventually it away it moves on 
so how do we record uh, the journal entries to record the deferred tax liability? Uh, just let me uh, give you one uh, information that um, income tax expense is always calculated what our accounting books are telling. It is based on that. Okay. Um, income tax payable is always paid. Tax payable is always paid based on your tax books. Difference between these two is called deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. It depends. If you pay more then what your expense is you have deferred tax asset if you pay less what your expense is then you have deferred tax liability because it is postponed for the future payment in the future payments so in the year one let me just quickly show you the tax books uh, the accounting books income was one hundred thousand tax rate is forty percent so 100,000 multiplied by 40%, the income tax expense, because it is based on accounting books, will be 40,000. So this is what we did over here. Year one, journal entry will be income tax expense gets debit with 40,000. How did I calculate it? My accounting books pre-tax income multiplied by tax rates. Income tax payable is calculated based on your tax books that you are supposed to pay. So in the previous table, you can see that the tax books has pre-tax uh, pre -tax income of 92,000. Let's take 40% of it and you will know, you will know that the 40% of 92,000 is 36,800. So your expense is actually more, but you are paying less. So the difference is temporary because in future, your expense will be less, but you have to pay more. So it will be reversed later on. So that's why we have deferred tax liability. The difference between these two amounts will give rise to deferred tax liability because actually you are supposed to pay this, but because of the tax calculation, you will be paying this, you are paying less. So the extra which you are not paying, you will be paying in future. Moving on towards the second year. In the second year, still the book income is 100,000. So 40% of that is 40,000. In the second year, the tax books pre-tax income is 96,000 multiplied by 40%, you will get 38,400. This is your expense according to the accounting, but you are paying 38,400 because of the difference in the tax rules. Uh, but these differences are temporary because eventually we saw that they were reversed. So this is the difference is known as deferred tax liability that in future you will be paying it in year three your tax books and accounting books both have the same income 100,000 so 40,000 40,000 which is 40 percent of that expense was 40,000 and tax payable was 40,000 so do, no account of deferred tax liability from year four till year five there was a reversal so what is happening in year four your accounting book has an income of 100,000 40 percent of it is 40,000 so income tax expense is 40,000 income tax expense 40,000 your this is debit because there is some uh, you know formatting issue that's why i'm writing debit and credit okay then accounting uh, uh, the tax books has an income of 104000 so more income more tax multiplied by 40% so your income tax payable becomes 41600 this is credit because it's a liability now you can see expense is less but the payable is more so the difference between them is a reversal of deferred tax liability on the debit side this is debit just drag it back because your debit side is smaller
So income tax expense debit 40,000. Deferred tax liability is going to decrease now 1,600 because it's a reversal time and income tax payable is going to get credit. In the fifth year, income tax expense is still 40,000 and income tax payable is 43,200. How did I calculate this? 1048,000 multiplied by 40%. So I get uh, 43,200. So the difference is a reversal in the deferred tax liability. This is again debit, this is debit, and this is credit here, 3,200 debit. Okay, so like this, we uh, find the accounting for uh, the deferred tax liability. Do remember this liability initially starts, but in the later years, it get reversed. Moving on towards the deferred tax asset. We have deferred tax liability because uh, the expense is more than what you are paying. But if the reverse situation is, which is expense is less than what you are paying, so you will be having a deferred tax asset which will be reversed in the later years. So we have explanation for this over here. An increase in the tax saved because deferred tax assets are considered as a saving in the tax for the future years due to the temporary tax differences. It will reverse. We have an example of a landlord. So uh, the tenant pays $3,000 per month as a rent for the building. And the tax rate for him is 40%. Assume that tenant paid 12 months for the full year and for the first month of the new year. So I was giving you some explanation about earned earned revenue in the beginning. So this is the example for that. The tenant has paid 13 months rent in advance. As I said that the tax losses, uh, most of the countries that deferred tax, um, uh, sorry, deferred uh, uh, revenues, or you can say earned earned revenues should be considered as revenue because the money is collected. So, uh, but we know that IFRS and GAAP doesn't permit this. They say that the, the revenue which is earned, that should be recognized as revenue only, right? So according to the accounting books, at the end of the first year, now assume that the tenant has taken uh, the building or the house on the rent for two years. And initially he paid um, 13 months rent in advance and then later on in the second year he paid 11 months rent, okay? So in accounting books, the revenue will be recorded only for the 12 months at the end of the year, not for 13 months because last month revenue, which is 13th month, January, it is not uh, earned yet. So 36,000 is the book revenue. How? Because 3,000 per month for 12 months. But according to the textbooks, this whole should be considered as revenue these 13 months. So in the first year, 39,000 will be recorded as revenue. Then in the books, uh, book uh, income, second year, remaining 12 months will be recorded, like 3,000 are is per month, 12 months, because the house was taken for two years. So 36,000 will be recorded as uh, revenue at the end of the year, second year. But in the tax books, now only 11 months revenue could be recorded because 13 months is already recorded previous year. So 3,000 multiplied by 11 is 33,000. If you see the total revenue received in both years is different, but the timing is different. So that's why it's temporary difference. Now, how much temporary difference? In the first year, the tax revenue was 3,000 more than the book revenue. So in the first year, um, the tax payments will be more according to the tax books. Uh, in the second year, your uh, accounting books has more revenue than the tax books. It means that income tax expense will be more in the second year than the tax payable. So how much 3,000, 3,000 is the difference? Now, for example, pre-tax income is 15,000. Pre-tax income means after paying all the expenses, uh, you have pre-tax income on which you have to apply the tax rate of 40%. Okay, uh, if accounting books gives you a pre-tax uh, income of 15,000, tax revenue is uh, 3,000 more, so it will be having 3,000 more uh, income, 
right so because revenue increases the pre-tax income so that's why it's 18,000 if accounting books uh, pre-tax income is 15,000 in the second year in second year tax books re uh, revenue is 3,000 less than the accounting books so their pre-tax income or taxable income will be 3,000 less than the book income now let's record the journal entries just like we did before do remember same thing that the expense is calculated based on accounting books but the payable is calculated based on tax books because tax authorities will be comparing this income so let's calculate our amounts for the journal entries income tax expense as i said it is based on the accounting books so your accounting books income is 15000 rate is 40% so income tax expense is 6000 income tax payable is based on your tax books so your tax books has a revenue of uh, pre tax income of 18000 rate is 40% so 7200 is payable you are paying more tax than what actually you should pay so the difference is a saving in the future in the future you will be paying less tax so the difference is 1200 and we consider it as deferred tax asset in the second year your income tax expense is uh, still 6000 because your pre tax income we assume it as 15000 income tax payable is based on your um, uh, tax books so your tax books has a revenue of 12000 12000 multiplied by 40% is 4800 this is your real tax expense but this what you are paying you are saving the money in the future so that's why your deferred tax asset will be reversed now okay so this is how the deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability accounting works um, the differences between the tax income and the accounting income could be temporary it could be permanent so there are different reasons for uh, these types of differences firstly let's talk about temporary difference this difference is uh, when the revenue gains expenses these types of things affects the accounting income in one time period but affects the tax income in a different time period if you see over here in this example uh, the income was affecting the tax in uh, revenue in the first year more uh, but in uh, the uh, the accounting books were affected with this in the second year so the timing difference are there uh, now this is an example for example if an asset is purchased for one million dollars the total amount of the depreciation over the assets life must be one million because we know that depreciation is an allocation of cost of asset to the expense account so when the life of the asset will complete it will be fully depreciated this is true under ifrs and under the tax law both of them agrees in other words net book value must be zero uh, by the end of the life of the asset right what is book value cost minus accumulated depreciation so at the end of the life if let's suppose the cost of asset is because they said 1 million so let's consider it 1 million cost of asset is 1 million accumulated depreciation should be 1 million so the book value net book value will be zero uh, therefore if the tax law permits accelerate depreciation method um, and uh, charges must be lower in the later years we saw this example when dealing with uh, the deferred tax liability that in the tax books because it was accelerated depreciation method so more depreciation was charged in the initial years and later year it was less as the end of the assets life approach total book uh, depreciation uh, converges to the total depreciation total tax depreciation so both books will have accounting books and textbook will have same amount of depreciation which will be 1 million but the timings are different um, there are some other sources of uh, temporary differences as well not only uh, the, def uh, the depreciation deferred revenue is also the source of the temporary difference we also did this example in deferred tax assets that when the tenant collected 13 months rent in advance 
So when the customer makes their advance payments for the goods and services, IFRS and GAAP requires the payment to be treated as a liability because they are advanced payment. You are not done with your job. You are not done with uh, the revenue recognition because your obligation is not over yet. So revenue is recognized later when you have earned it, when the services are being delivered or the goods are being given to the customer, then we can recognize the revenue. But many tax uh, jurisdiction or you can say many countries, they require such payments to be taxed when they are received. So when you re receive according to the textbooks, they should be recorded uh, for the calculation of the taxes. Long term contracts, book income is usually calculated using percentage of completion method. If a company has done a long term contract agreement with another co company or with the government uh, to um, provide uh, some um, services for the longer period of time over a contractual price. Uh, so the revenue is recognized every year by using the percentage of completion method. But some uh, tax authorities, they permit some other methods as well, like completed contract method or many other methods. Moving on towards bad debt expenses. For the book purposes, companies are required to estimate the uh, allowances for doubtful account, which are also known as uncollect uh, collectible accounts in the year of sale using the allowances method. The year you done you you did the sale same year at the end of the year you will be calculating allowances for uh, doubtful account, but uh, in most of the countries bad debt expense is not uh, recognized in the tax purposes in the tax books until a customer really becomes a bad and uncollectible then uh, the the waiver is allowed, so because of this change in method the book income differs with the tax income. Moving on towards uh, some more things like prepaid expenses um, under GAAP and IFRS prepayments for the rent or insurance, they are reported as current assets. Expenses are recognized gradually when uh, you have uh, met them or by following the matching principle. Tax law, on the other hand, may permit companies to deduct the full amount as a payment in the year when they have collected it. Moving on towards equity income, the equity method requires firms to recognize their proportionate share of any profit or loss reported by the affiliates. Uh, so according to the equity method, uh, we are uh, when 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 the one company, let's suppose a company A has a uh, 40% investment in company B. So in that case, company B will be an affiliate um, affiliate of company A. We follow equity method for this purpose. In uh, chapter 17 recording, we will discuss it in more detail. But anyways, equity method says that um, whatever income this affiliate is earning, uh, the investor can recognize it as an investment income. So what investor will do, equity investment will increase and it will be recorded as investment income or revenue. This is what accounting uh, rules allows at IFRS and GAPS allows us. But uh, if you talk about uh, the tax uh, uh, authorities in most of the countries, uh, they say do not record it as income when actually affiliates issues the dividend that dividend should be recorded as income. But in equity method, dividend is not recorded as income. It is actually recorded as a, a reduction in the equity investment or you can say a return uh, or a re reimbursement of the equity investment. So this is the difference between gap and uh, the accounting, uh, account, you can say accounting rules and uh, the tax rules. Finally, installment sales. Installment sales uh, are the sales which you do in installment spaces. Under GAAP and IFRS, uh, sales are generally recognized for the book purposes when the goods are delivered to the customer. Uh, as soon as your obligation is over, you can recognize the revenue regardless that in how much installments the customer is going to make the payment because we know that IFRS and GAAP follows the revenue recognition principle, not the cash collection right but um, tax uh, authority says that what the cash is received from the customer every time that cash should be considered as sales not the full amount uh, but it's not everywhere in the world some countries they ask for it 
So these uh, some are the some reasons why do we have temporary differences, and because of these temporary differences, why do we have deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities? Um, so the conclusion is that uh, because of the temporary differences, your tax income will be greater than the book income in the future period. Uh, so uh, if, for example, currently your tax income is more than the book income, this is current. So what does it mean? Uh, your expense because book income helps us in calculating the income tax expense, right? So your expense uh, uh, this tax is more right so your expense uh, is uh, okay let's say it again if your tax income is greater than your book income so I your income tax expense this is tax expense or you can say income tax expense is going to be um, uh, less but income tax payable is going to be more because tax income is more right so in the future years what will happen it will give rise to the deferred tax liability whereas if your um, uh, tax income is less than the book income so uh, currently your uh, uh, you know uh, current uh, currently your income tax expense is more but in the future it will give rise to the deferred tax asset or if you want to summarize it in a simple way, you can say that if your uh, tax income is more, your tax payable is going to be more. Right? And uh, because of if this is more, it means that your book income is less. And if your book income is lack, less, your income tax expense is going to be less. So on the debit side, you will have deferred tax asset, but later on in the future years, it will decrease. Okay. And the opposite scenario is for deferred tax uh, liabilities. Under IFRS, deferred tax assets and liabilities, uh, they both are classified as non-current on the balance sheet. But in the notes to financial statement, it is important to mention that why do we have these deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities. So the component, I showed you multiple components in the previous uh, pages. So those components should be clearly mentioned. And we should also mention that how much amount we are expecting in the coming 12 months to be recovered or um, after the 12 months because the reversal is important. That's why they are deferred tax assets or liabilities. U.S. Um, uh, GAAP also requires a detailed breakdown of deferred tax component like IFRS wants this detail. Same is the case. GAAP also wants these details, but the classification is not non-current straightforward. In IFRS, they are non-current. In GAAP, uh, it depends that which type of asset or liability is uh, creating this deferred tax asset or liability. What is the reason behind that? If the deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability is because of current assets or current uh, liabilities, then in that case, uh, they will be classified as uh, current. But if this deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability are because of non-current nature of assets and liabilities, then in that case, they will be classified as non-current. So deferred tax assets and liabilities can appear as current or non-current, depending on the classification of the related assets or liabilities responsible for this difference. Let's take one example. For example, if a deferred tax liability is because of the depreciation, because your uh, uh, tax depreciation is more than the book depreciation. So depreciation is a non-current assets, right? So this liability is going to be, this deferred tax liability will be non-current liability because the related item is uh, non-current in nature because the temporary difference relates to non-current. A deferred tax asset resulting from the prepaid expenses. Now, prepaid expenses are current assets. So, deferred tax asset, which is because of this, it will be classified as current. So, deferred tax asset will be mentioned in the current assets. Okay? So, this is the difference between GAAP and IFRS reporting. 
Now let's talk about the permanent differences. We know that deferred tax asset and liabilities are always reversed later on. But if there is something which is affecting um, the book income and not affecting the tax income or they are affecting the tax income but never affecting the book income, uh, the differences will be there in the income of uh, books and tax books. So that type of differences is permanent in nature and we cannot calculate deferred tax assets and liabilities because of these permanent differences. So the permanent difference is caused by the following reason. An item that will affect your book income but will never affect the tax income. For example, undeductible fines, bribes, lavish entertainment expenses or any income source that is exempt from the tax. It is not going to affect the tax income. Vice versa, if an item that will affect the tax income but will never affect the book income, so the, the incomes are going to be different and this difference is permanent in nature. For example, deducting a portion of dividend received from another firm is allowed by the tax jurisdiction. You know that in accounting books we use equity method uh, and in equity method we do not uh, record dividend as a dividend income, right? We record it as a reduction in equity investment. But in textbooks, we do record it. So now it's going to be a permanent difference. This will affect the tax income, but will never affect the book income. Under these type of differences, tax and the book income, they don't get reversed because uh, the other books are never affected. Thus, they do not give rise to deferred tax assets or liabilities. Now, as I said that both GAAP and IFRS want extensive, uh, you know, details or details about the reasons for these uh, deferred tax assets and liabilities. So they want the disclosure for the income taxes as well in notes to financial statement. So these um, disclosures should be about the tax rates. Tax rates includes the strategy tax rates and effective tax rates, both of them. Because for the large companies, both rates, strategy rate and the effective tax rates usually differs. There are different reasons for that. Strategy tax rate means the rule book of the tax, it gives income slots. That if a person earns $50,000 to $100,000, he should pay, let's suppose, 35% tax. If the income rise from $1,000 to more, it will be paying 40%. So slots are mentioned, right? But the companies, they are sometimes having some tax advantages. They are, have some tax reductions because of their nature of work. So the real tax rate which they pay, that is known as effective tax rate. There are different reasons why do these two rates differ, the rates in the books which are statutory rate and the rates which are applied by the companies. So here are some examples like foreign taxation, then export sales benefit. Foreign taxation means those companies who are uh, having business in different countries, so multinational firms, they take the advantage of the lower tax rates in other countries. How does it happen? For example, Intel, Corp Intel Corporation, all of us knows them because of their processors. So Intel can use transfer pricing policies. Transfer pricing policies means that um, the sales has a price range that each item should be sold between 15 to $20. So uh, they can decide the price from this range, any, any range, and uh, it, it will be that range which will save their tax. Okay, so if you see over here, for example, Intel can use transfer pricing policies. This is transfer pricing to ensure that when one business unit means one company, which is uh, business unit means they all are with attached to Intel. Okay, so one one uh, when one business unit sells to another, the costs are high. They are sold at a higher cost, or have low revenues. So might be uh, you know when um, Company A and B both are uh, the companies of Intel. Company A is selling the goods to Company B. So the revenue they will be keeping the minimum 15. So that the revenue is less, they have to pay less tax. Okay. And for the Company B, it's going to be uh, because this what they paid. So th that will be cost of goods sold for them. So now this B is in a low 
tax country and A is in high tax country. So A revenue is less, they have to pay less tax. B uh, revenue, uh, sorry, B cost is less because uh, can you see between them, they are being assigned the minimum cost of uh, goods sold. So their cost is less, uh, but the rates are also less. So it's not an issue. Um, okay or have low revenues in the business units under the high tax jurisdiction as i said over here such practices shift the profits to the country with the low tax rates so can you see their cost of goods sold is the minimum out of the full range so their profits will be higher but their taxes are less export sales benefits are also one of the reason for differences in these uh, rates so when government encourages companies to export by providing the tax benefits if government wants to promote one product sale uh, export sales basically then in that case they will start giving the tax rebates or low tax benefits to those companies who deal with such stuff um, deferred tax liabilities, uh, the reason should be mentioned clearly in the notes to financial statement if you have deferred tax liability. The biggest source of deferred tax liability is mainly depreciation. Uh, like uh, we said this many times that IFRS and GAAP, they might be following straight line, but it's not must, but might be. For example, they are following straight line method, but other uh, the tax authorities wants accelerated depreciation method or IFRS and gap are following unit of activity method and the tax laws are asking for the straight line method so the rates calculation way differs that's why um, the deferred tax liability will arise unrealized gains on investments are those gains which uh, are just by the comparison of the book value and the market value of investment securities and uh, these investment securities are trading uh, securities so that's why we have to record their unrealized gains in our income statement or sometimes in um, you know other comprehensive income but if it is in income statement it's going to affect the tax calculation so second important source item reflects expected tax for holding gains on investments that are marked to market. Marked to market means that um, they are, uh, you know, trading uh, securities like any time when the market prices will be good company will sell them. So we have to report them at their market value. So if we are at the year end, we have to compare the value which is in our books with the market value. The difference is considered as unrealized gain. If the market value is high and if the market value is low the difference is considered as unrealized loss but the gains gives uh, usually the rise so if the fair value of the investment declines uh, so does the deferred tax liability why because you will be having a loss in your income statement according to IFRS books and then what will happen you will have less taxable income because there was a loss and due to that less taxable income you will have less deferred tax liabilities deferred tax is not recognized for the revaluation of the fixed assets um, these are investments right fixed assets are another class like property plant and equipment so when you revalue them then the deferred tax is not recognized Let's talk about deferred tax assets. Common source of deferred tax assets are usually the net operating losses um, because company pay taxes when they are profitable. So government grant them tax relief uh, so I gave you two examples. One was um, transfer pricing. The second one was uh, uh, the exports. This is another example that if the companies are having net operating losses, they will be, uh, you know, provided the tax uh, relief from the government. Uh, so during loss making years, they need, need, need to pay less taxes. So when an operating loss occurs, the business can apply the loss to the tax income already reported and receive a refund for the tax paid or uh, they will be given a reduction that in the current year taxes that they have to pay the less taxes um, there is another uh, concept which is relevant to the deferred tax asset, ex, uh, assets that is known as valuation allowance uh, so there is no guarantee that companies will remain profitable in the future 
when they are profitable then they have deferred tax liabilities and uh, because of that deferred tax asset could be utilized to waive off that liability so if a firm is uh, not uh, does not generate any taxable income it uh, will not be able to realize any tax benefit so deferred tax live assets are not going to be reversed right because deferred tax assets are reversed when in future you have to pay more taxes fine so that is uh, those benefits can only be realized means you cannot in cash this deferred tax asset the benefit of deferred tax asset is that in the future you have to pay less taxes because of this benefit available so um, uh, these benefits can only be realized which benefit deferred tax asset utilization benefits um, when you make less tax payments in the future uh, when you are profitable but there is no guarantee that the companies will remain the profitable so due to this reason gap requires the funds to check at the end of every year the likelihood that the deferred tax asset may be fully realized in the future or not means in the future will you be able to recognize uh, the deferred tax uh, 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 assets benefit or not um, if management believes the the, prob uh, the probability of the future taxable income be being sufficient like uh, if management believes that yes we can get the benefit of this deferred tax asset and the probability is more than 50 percent we are sure that we will be availing this benefit then we can recognize the deferred tax asset fully there is no need for allowance but if the management feels that uh, the company's profitability is in danger in the future then in that case companies have to maintain this deferred tax valuation allowance it's just like you know we have allowances for doubtful account for accounts receivable same is the case deferred tax asset also have a valuation allowance so when in future uh, realization of any def deferred tax asset is uncertain due to the insufficient taxable income or due to the poor profitability then the companies must maintain this allowance so this allowance is a contra asset account why contra asset account because deferred tax asset is an asset account a valuation allowance will reduce the deferred tax asset so it is a contra asset account it has a normal balance of credit and it reduces the carrying value of the deferred tax asset finally when the tax income is greater than the book income in the future period it will give rise to the uh, the deferred tax liability we talked about it and uh, if the deferred tax liability is increasing every year reversal is not happening then it should be monitored that what's the reason why the gap is increasing between the book income and the tax income maybe there are some permanent differences which companies are considering right uh, also, deferred tax assets must be monitored. Uh, I just a uh, few seconds back before I told you that there is a valuation allowance, right? So companies should make sure that they are they will they be profitable in the future so that they can get the benefits of this deferred tax asset. When companies auditors have reasons that uh, also you know when the auditor uh, checks the financials of companies they make sure that the proper allowances are maintained for the deferred tax assets and if they have there are no allowances and the auditor has a doubt that the company's profitability in the future is not secure then they can ask them to maintain the valuation allowance uh, to reduce the deferred tax asset so if you see the balance sheet of a company and you find there is a deferred tax valuation allowance it's, it's a signal for you it's a signal for investors that the company's future profitability is in doubt company is not sure about the future profitability so uh, students this is it about the discussion of uh, taxes uh, we have talked about uh, permanent and the temporary differences we have talked about deferred tax assets deferred tax liabilities we did two examples we also talked about the reporting perspective or you can say disclosure perspective of uh, taxes hopefully uh, the things are clear to you if you are confused about something or some topics are confusing you please write in the comment section you can also ask me in the class i will inshallah try my best to explain the concepts take care everyone have a great day